Quite the day here in Canton, Ohio. Nine more busts in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. 371 now enshrined. And Zach Thomas had the first bust revealed on the day. Long wait for Chuck Howley's family to see that bust finally. And Joe Thomas and his wife revealed the final bust of the day. Capping another Canton Saturday filled with memories. Once I asked my defensive line coach, Dan Sikanovich, a guy I really looked up to, about making the Pro Bowl. And he said to me, Joe, you're not going to have to worry about making a Pro Bowl. You're going to have to worry about someday being enshrined in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I told the Lord, if, I, if you give me six days to prepare, I'm going to let you take over on the seventh to let people know that you are a bad mama jamma and can do all things. To all the Buffalo, New England, and New York Jet fans, hold on, I got it coming for you. Despite all the things you screamed at me, threw at me, and did to me, don't tell anybody this, I really enjoyed it. Thank you for believing in me and supporting me every step of the way. You will always have a place to stay on Revis Island. So I feel this recognition for every one of you watching at home that are here today. There's pewter and red fanatics who rallied for me the past six years, screaming at the top of their lungs, hey, Hall of Fame, you're missing one of the greats. I saw you guys do it. I see you guys today. I'd like to ask that we all give Dad a shout out. And so on the count of three, we're going to yell, hello, Chuck. Okay, here goes. One, two, three. Hello, Chuck! And to everyone who loved the game the way that he did, it's been a long time coming, Dad, but you made it. Ladies and gentlemen, Eric Coriel has landed in Canton. That number 10,363 is special to me in a lot of ways. And not just because it's an NFL record, but because it shows that I was there for my brothers 10,363 times in a row. They could count on me. Being an offensive lineman is all about being a servant and showing up for everybody else. I was quite a line right there, right? Yeah. That number is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Well, I mean, and we were just talking when he was up there that you think about it, okay, the starts, and but then he's talking about, I never had a broken chin strap, I never got a cramp, I never had a moment where he stepped off of the field and somebody else had to come in. And I mean, that's unbelievable to think about. I don't think you put it in perspective until he says something like that because when you've played the game, it's like all these things happen. Oh, you got to come out for a play because of this or that. Not a single play for that long. Just, just incredible. Yeah, and with this trademark humor said, you know, I would, I would mention all of my backup left tackles, <laughs> but I never let you get on the field. Yeah. I'd let you take my reps in practice, yeah. but, you know, it, it, was a, gracious of him. it was a neat speech to wrap up the day. It, it, was, it was just so, so much fun. I mean, you had Joe Klecko basically turning out the stadium with the Jets. You know, Fireman Ed, come out here and get the Jets chant. I mean, that was very unique. You had Rondé Barber coming out and saying, my story is uncommon, yeah. and here is why it's uncommon. And the depth he went into into explaining it was like, wow, that is uncommon. We always hear these stories of triumph over tragedy and things like that, but the way he kind of wove the narrative through was absolutely fantastic. And, and Kurt, you, you, know, you know this, you're, you're in this club. Everybody here is special for a reason. Yeah. And once again today, we heard tales and stories and even some from the family members like Eric Coriel has finally landed right. as to why they deserve to be your teammates. And, and I love that you said that because I think that was the moment that jumped out to me more than any others was when Rondé was talking about be uncommon because that is to me what the Pro Football Hall of Fame is all about is that when I got selected to be a part of this and I went into those rooms with all these different individuals we understand what they did on the football field. But you start to understand why they have a gold jacket is because there's something different about each and every one of these guys that led them to this point. They're all uncommon and all their journeys are different. And that to me is what this enshrinement ceremony is all about is a chance to get a glimpse into 
What is uncommon about each and every one of these guys that brought them to the same place in Kansas?